Hi guys, welcome to Vacation Bible School. Each night we will start with the pledges, so we invite you to stand up and join us. We're going to start with the pledge to the American flag. And you know that you put your right hand over your heart, so join us with the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now do the pledge to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. And the Bible. Hold your hands. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Its words I will hide in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yesterday, our friend Cam Track was stranded here by a rock slide. It was a big problem. I wonder if he and his crew were able to get all those rocks moved out of the way. Well, hey Cam, uh, I'm glad you stopped by. Give us an update on the rock slide. <sighs> well, my crew worked, and I worked, and worked, and pushed, and shoved, and finally got all those boulders off the track. But they were so heavy that they damaged the track. Fixing that is a whole other problem. We're still stuck. Hmm. I, I'm sorry, Cam, but it'll get fixed eventually. Um, eventually is not okay. Do you know what that train is carrying? Um, no. This train is filled with M&Ms. Do you know how much people love M&Ms? If we can't get down the mountain, then the M&Ms won't get delivered. And if it, if we don't get it delivered, then the m and or then the people will get mad at us. And if they get mad at us, then they'll yell at us. And if they yell at us, then I'll get scared because I don't like when people yell. So maybe it's better if we just stay here on this mountain forever because then angry people won't find us. But then, uh, uh, oh, I guess I, I ran out of steam. <sighs> my goodness. <sighs> wow, I'd say, oh my goodness, it, it may take a little while, but the track will get fixed and no one here is mad at you. Uh, you've got all these great friends who think you're really cool. This situation is hopeless. All I want to do is get on my train, blow the whistle, and chug away. Two, two. Cam, don't lose hope. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Think think about driving your train. Go to your happy place. Close your eyes. Driving a train. Happy place. That's right. You're chugging along. Over a bridge. Up a hill. Around a bend. You go through a tunnel. It's dark right now. But look, if you look straight ahead, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Do you see it? Oh, wow, I really see it. Okay. Oh. Okay, all right. There is hope. It's like the light at the end of the dark tunnel. When things seem when things seem dark or hopeless, Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. So even though you're stuck here for a will well, a little longer, there's still hope. It does make a lot of sense to hope in someone who won't let you down or get mad about M&Ms. Hey, you guys, I see what you're doing. Stop eating the M&Ms. Put those back. Yikes, it looks like your crew must be be hungry. Those M&Ms may not be safe. Stop. Wait, you guys. Welcome back to Rocky Railway. I'm Susie, and I'm your conductor on this adventure. I'm so excited to help you sing, have fun, and learn about, learn about how Jesus' power pulls us through every day. Let's sing. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. Trusting in you You give us hope And life that's forever You make us bold And we stand together Your power will pull us through We're trusting in you We're trusting in you We're off on this 
this journey there's no looking back with Jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Railway, we're imagining what it would be like to travel by steam engine through the mighty, majestic Rocky Mountains. Those mountains go all the way from Canada all the way down through New Mexico. That makes me wonder, hmm, if you went up to the Rockies, what would you do there? There's a lot of things you can do in the mountains. And on a train, if we were on a train headed into the Rocky Mountains, we'd have one thing in common. We'd all be going in the same direction. So let's sing a new song about a train that we'd all like to be on. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train Bring it down. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train this train this train this train that song makes me so excited to get to heaven when we'll spend forever with God the Bible says there won't be any sadness or pain 
We can only imagine how awesome heaven will be. But until then, we can look for evidence of God all around us. So don't forget to be looking for your God sightings. Um, they're a way to give God credit for things that are happening all around us. There's a spirit I cannot contain There's a spirit I cannot contain The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave The same spirit I cannot contain Everywhere we go, Jesus' power pulls us through, no matter what twists and turns life has in store. Let's try something. We're going to imagine this balloon is you, okay? So, you're full of joy and gladness and good things, um, things that make you happy. Getting to sit by your best friend at school and getting extra time out at recess. But wait, you don't look very full of happy stuff. So stand up, everybody, and make yourself look like this balloon. Get your arms up. There you go. All right. So sometimes life isn't full of all those happy things, and we do feel sad. And we may get discouraged. And things seems like there's no hope. There's no hope at all. Ah! Have you ever had a time like that when you felt really sad or hopeless or empty like, like this balloon now? That's why I'm glad that we know that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Jesus doesn't just fill us with happy things. Jesus' power is deeper and stronger than that. The Bible says, Be strong and courageous, all of you who put your hope in the Lord. Jesus' power does... Jesus' power does this. It's a little bit chilly. <laughs> it's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. With hope, our hearts can fly. I wonder what amazing Bible buddy will help us learn about that hope. Let's find out. Glad you're back on track at Rocky Railway. Wow, the 
first day just flew by, didn't it? I'm Ava, a red-tailed hawk. You can find me and my family members all over North America. We're everywhere. Even though we live all across North America, you may not see me in your backyard. <laughs> well, unless you don't have any neighbors. We like to live in wide open spaces where we can soar over treetops, grass, and water looking for food. You might say that red-tailed hawks are faithful friends. When we find a mate, we stay together for life. My fine feathered friend and I build our nests together and care for our chicks together. We're an excellent team. I'm happiest way up in the sky. That's why I build my nest at the tallest point I can find. Some hawk nests have been spotted as high as 120 feet off the ground. That's as high as a human tower of 20 tall crew leaders. My nest might be at the tip top of a tree, or even on the top of a building or a telephone pole. That gives me a bird's eye view of what's around. Food, friends, or animals that might want to hurt us. Ah, I love soaring with my big, beautiful wings. They're more than three feet across, you know. God gave me just what I needed to catch the wind and just fly. Up here, you see things differently. Stuff that seemed big seems smaller. Things that seemed harder look much easier. A path that looks like a dead end? Hey, I can see a way out. A fresh perspective can put the wind under your wings and give you the strength to keep going. Sometimes I spot you humans with my sharp hawk eyes and you look a little down. Do things seem impossible? Scary? Hopeless? Maybe you need a fresh perspective. Maybe you need to see things Jesus' way, with hope. Jesus is stronger than anything. He has a plan for everything. You can have strength, courage, and hope. The Bible encourages us with these words. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Jesus' power gives us hope. So trust Jesus! Ava! Ava reminds us that Jesus' power fills us with hope. Okay, all right. So Jesus' power does this. <gasps> fills us up. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. And with hope, our hearts can fly. <gasps> yeah, like Ava. So let's learn a new song in You Alone to remind us of what hope can do for us. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand, you give me faith and I will
Today, our story comes from the Bible, and it's a true story. And it's a story that helps us discover how Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Speaking of hope, I hope we don't run into any problems today. We'll get on a ship. I always get a little seasick when I'm out on the sea, so you might not want to stand very close to me. That could be a huge mistake. But the weather's supposed to be calm, so it sounds like smooth sailing. Ready to go aboard? All right, the first thing we need to do is haul the cargo aboard. There's the cargo I've got, and we walk up this plank. These planks here, they're very, you've got to be very careful. And when we get to it, ah, we can put the cargo down. All right, that's safe. Oh, well, we've got the cargo on board. Whew. Oh, wait a minute, listen to this. Dear Pastor Al, I'm feeling a little green around the gills today, so I won't be able to sail the ship. But you used to sail, so you be in charge. Have a fun voyage, and thanks for your help. Sign, the captain. Well, it's been a while since I've sailed the ship. I can tell you that. But maybe it'll come back to me. It's sort of like riding a bicycle. You never quite forget it, except our feet may get a little wetter here today. All right. Here's what we need to do first. We need to hoist the sails. This is a hard job, but it, it's one that we need to do. Then we need to swab the decks, clean them all off, a little mopping here, mopping there. And then we need to haul up the anchor. Whew, that's a heavy job, but I'll do that. Okay, haul the anchor up. And then we need to, to turn on the engines. Oh, <laughs> there are no engines. The only way that we can go is with the wind. And uh, since we're stuck until the wind comes up, we might as well sit down. We're powerless to do anything. Oh, all right. And while we're waiting, let's talk about something. We have things in our life that we seem powerless to change. That means that we try to change them, but we can't. And there are a lot of things in my life as I was growing up that I was powerless to change. Uh, sometimes I got teased, and I really wanted to change that so people didn't tease me, but I was powerless to change it, I thought. And as I get older, I see people who, who are in trouble, and they don't accept help. And I'm powerless sometimes to, to change that. And so I know there's some things in your life that you feel powerless about. And so, so think about those things. Well, it's no fun being powerless. It feels hopeless. But today, we're learning about a new kind of power, the power of Jesus. And Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Hey, we have wind. Let's go. Should be an easy trip. Unless that prisoner chained down below is right. He said that the ship would, would sink and the cargo would float off and we shouldn't be sailing today. But he's not a sailor, so we won't pay attention to what he says. His name's Paul, and from what I hear, he's a Christian who got in trouble because he keeps talking about this Jesus person. And the Roman emperor doesn't want him to talk about Jesus, but he keeps doing it anyway. So he's on the ship down there, chained, because we're taking him to Rome, because he wouldn't stop talking about Jesus. And so the emperor wants to punish him. And, and I thought about it, and I thought, wow, you know, that is, that is hard. But, and so since Paul didn't, was not supposed to talk about Jesus, but he did, that's why he's in trouble. So what do you think his punishment ought to be? Well, if you talk about Jesus, you won't be chained up in the bottom of a ship like the prisoner Paul down there, I can tell you that. But, whoa, hey, does anybody else feel that? Guess what? The wind is blowing, and, and it feels like rain, too. It feels like rain, too. I'll go below and check the charts just in case we're heading into bad weather. I'm going to go down and check on Paul, too. I'll be right back. Well, bad news, mates. Down below, there's water sloshing all around, which means we're heading into rough seas. And I hope that Paul wasn't right about what's coming our way. Things could get rough, really rough. Can you feel it? The wind's really kicking up. Everybody, lean to port. That's left. Lean over here. All right. Now, lean to starboard. That's right. Lean to your right. All right. Okay. All right. Now, we'll try to hug the shoreline before this ship breaks up. Quick, help me haul in these sails. I got to get the sails down. It's hard because the wind's blowing so hard. 
And I'll check and see if Paul's still okay. Hunker down till I get back, okay? Well, good news and bad news. Paul says that the ship's going down. That's the bad news. The good news, none of us will drown. Paul says Jesus will take care of us all. And is that the shore over there? I think it is. I can't see much. Anybody else? Yeah, that's the shore. And so I'll, I'll try for the shore, but I have a tough decision to make. In situations like this, I'm supposed to kill the prisoner so he doesn't get away. But Paul is, is a kind man, and, and I hate to do that. And so maybe I should let him live. Now, what do you think? Okay, I'll let him go. You, down below deck, unchain the prisoner. Now, let's cut these anchors and make for sure the storm's getting worse. We're running to ground. The ship's breaking apart. We're going to have to jump overboard and swim for it. All right, you ready? I'll count to three, and when I say three, we'll jump overboard. One, two, freeze. Oh, my heart is racing. Everyone sit down. I have to sit down before my legs give out. Oh, wow. Imagine being on a ship as it splintered under you and you dropped into huge waves crashing around the, against the shore. Lightning flashed and the wind was howling. It must have been awful. But Paul was right. Nobody on the ship was lost. Trusting in Jesus gave them hope in this shipwrecked situation. And so we know that trusting in Jesus, trusting in Jesus, Jesus' power will give them hope. Trust Jesus. Welcome back to Imagination Station. I can't wait to see what amazing things we'll discover today. So to start our time together, I have a question for you. Who remembered their imagination today? Looks like lots of people forgot. Well, that's okay. It's only day two. I thought some people might forget, so I talked to my friend Ava for ideas. I think you met Ava, the red-tailed hawk? Anyway, Ava told me something incredible. God is so imaginative that he created red tail hawks with a unique one of a kind creative call. Let's close our eyes and imagine we're red tailed hawks on the top of a big, beautiful mountain and we're about to take flight. Everybody close your eyes. 
All right, open your eyes. That was so cool. Ava has an amazing call. Now that our imaginations have taken flight, let's move on. Red-tailed hawks have great eyesight, but can they see colors? Or can they only see black and white? Think about your answer. Okay, let's make a drum roll so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is... Red-tailed hawks can see colors! In fact, they can see more colors than humans can! Imagine that! Well, I can see that your brains are bubbling with imagination. So let's see what we can discover about those bodacious things called bubbles! Just look at these bouncy bubbles! Aren't they cool? They float, they fly, and they even have colors inside. Bubbles make me happy because they remind me of hope. Hope lifts my spirit like bubbles lift into the air. And bubbles are beautiful, just like the hope we have in Jesus is beautiful. Today, every time you see a bubble, remember that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! Did you know bubbles are actually made from a layer of water between two layers of soap film, like a soap sandwich? No matter how a bubble starts out, if you leave it alone, it will always form a sphere, a perfectly round shape. Does anyone know why bubbles always form spheres? A bubble wants to be a sphere because that shape has the least amount of surface tension of all possible shapes, cubes and pyramids. A sphere has the smallest amount of outside area. That's why bubbles all want to be round. Imagine that! You know, today's sciency fun gizmo includes a couple of spheres, but they won't burst like bubbles. I can't wait to show you! Today, we're discovering that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! I don't know about you, but I really need the hope that Jesus gives us. Like we just saw, bubbles rise into the air when we blow into the bubble solution. Today's sciency fun gizmo kind of reminds me of bubbles, but it's way more fun. This, my friends, is called a hope and hover. I love how it works. Watch this. Sometimes when I'm feeling a little down, I need to remember the hope Jesus gives us. The hope Jesus gives raises my spirits and makes me feel better. And sometimes another person might be feeling down, and I can tell that friend about the hope we have in Jesus. Then the hope Jesus gives can make my friend feel better. And other times, I can celebrate with my friend that we both have hope in Jesus. We can thank Jesus together for the hope he gives us, and it lifts us both up. Now it's your turn. Your fun hope and hover can remind you that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! Don't touch the hope and hovers just yet. We'll assemble them together, okay? Let's lay out all of your supplies. You should have two white spheres. One blue plastic loop and a cardboard flute. I've decorated my cardboard flute with markers. I also drew faces on my spheres to remind me of my friends. To assemble your hope and hover, first take the cardboard flute. Find the square shaped hole on the flute. Grab your blue plastic loop and insert it into the square shaped hole. Make sure that you align the loop so that the circles 
on the cardboard flute are coming through directly center. Then grab your spheres. Carefully balance them in the blue plastic loop and you're ready to experiment with your hope and hover. If you'd like for both of the spheres to rise together, hold the flute without covering up either of the holes. If you would like one sphere to rise, cover one of the holes with your finger. If you'd like the other to rise, cover the other hole. Sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. The hope Jesus gives us can always lift us up and we can share the hope we have in Jesus with our friends and family members. Then they can be lifted by the hope of Jesus too. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Now it's your turn to experiment with your hope and hover. Have fun. When it's time to come back, you'll hear the train whistle. Have fun. we've come to the end of our time at Imagination Station. Take your hope and hover and put all of the pieces inside a baggie. That way none of them get lost. If you have a Try This at Home sticker, it reminds you of the daily Bible point. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. All right, we'll see you next time here at Imagination Station. <laughs>
just like right now. Today's special Bible verse, Psalm 31, 24, tells us, So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Enjoy your bagel tunnel. Welcome to Rocky Wrap Up. All right, well, let's, let's sing the power shuffle. Hit it. today, don't forget, you need to be looking for more God sightings. Train yourself to spot God's love and power everywhere you go. Today, we discovered that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Our Bible memory buddy is Ava. So get your little Ava out. On the, on the back, it says Jesus' power gives us hope, and it also has your Bible verse. Be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope into the Lord, or in the Lord. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yesterday, I read about the gold rush that happened here a long, long, long time ago. People rushed on trains from far away to mine for gold in these mountains. They traveled here to find gold. And these mountains, and they could have, couldn't have found all that gold. There's just no way they found all that gold. Let's see if I can get my equipment working. Find the right button. Do I have light? <laughs> Do I have light? So there's just no way they found all that gold. I'm going to find some gold. So I'm going to search for some sparkly specks of gold. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. On the railroad. Hey, what are you doing, Susie? Well, I'm panning for gold. 
I don't think there's any left. You're wasting your time. Really? Well, I am hopeful that I'll find some. Okay, but before you dig, what's the light for? <laughs> this is my headlamp. It shines the light on the dirt and it helps me to find the gold and, and it's in all the dirt and rocks. Can I wear one? You sure can. Ooh. I know I caught myself in the head here. <laughs> bright light, bright, bright lights! Light. Ah, okay, well, hey, let's put our lights down here and look for gold. <gasps> no way, no way! I found some, I got the gold, we've got gold! Wow, well, you look closely when you found your gold, so I'm gonna keep looking. <gasps> um, there has to be more gold. I'm gonna find some, yes. Yes! Wait, yeah, yes, I, I got gold! I got gold too! Man, panning for gold is such a rush. Oh, maybe that's why they call it Gold Rush. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun! Oh! I I turn this off. Well, that's the sound that keeps me on track. I have to run. Uh -huh. Wow, finding gold. It's like finding hope. Oh. All this dirt. Whew. So there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of hope or good in the world, does there? But Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. It feels amazing. But you have to keep your eyes open to find it. You have to move aside from the yuckiness to see it. You have to shine Jesus' light into dark areas and look closely. So keep that in mind. The reason we're shining a light on God's sightings this week is because when we see God in action, that's evidence that God is good and he gives us hope. Let's stand and sing one last song, You and You Alone.
another great day to share Jesus love and power we're gonna sing one more song we can trust him because we can always hold on to Jesus awesome power to get us through is track Before we put the brakes on our trip and say goodbye, let's invite Pastor Allen up for our closing prayer. Thanks again, Susie. Let's have our closing prayer. Remember to bow your heads and close your eyes. Oh Lord, we thank you that we have hope and that Jesus taught us to have hope. And I ask you now to give all those who have their heads bowed now a feeling of hope in their lives and bring us back together tomorrow night as we study another one of your passages and learn about what you can give to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.